This is a bit exciting. I have the brand new, not even on the website, new framed designed stealth recon kit. Um, Quentin has completely redesigned the stealth recon with some fantastic new features and I'm going to be able to get to do an end-to-end -to -end build video for you guys so you can see how it all goes together but uh, really excited about this it looks fantastic I actually had a chance to even fly it it flies really well this is a, a really major improvement on the Stealth Recon um, and I'm going to go over more once I've got it built a lot of the design features but it really is um, there's a lot of thought has gone into this kit and it really is a major step forward on um, on on the 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 recon size um, frame and build um, but some of the things I'll just cover for the moment the top plate now features the removable um, centerpiece like we're seeing on some of the bigger kits but again but with this kit it's also done differently um, and you'll see as I do the build how this actually goes together a little bit differently to how the other frames have gone together um, but some really cool features the tail's been completely redone and one of the major features of the tail is this large round section for the GPS sensor to go on so the frame is actually going to help protect the GPS sensor um, gives you a big nice mounting spot for the GPS sensor so um, there's lots of other features in the frames and I'll go through all the features in the frames but for now we're just going to get on with the build and the thing I like to start with first is getting my booms built so you get in the kit four of the 770 kv 775 sorry kv carbon bird motors you get four of your carbon booms you get four of your and four sets of hardware sorry i've already grabbed one of those motor mounts out and you get four sets of hardware to make up your four booms so the first step i'm going to do is i'm going to make up my four booms. I'd just like to get that out of the way. And I'm going to do the first one, then I'll pause and I'll come back and show you the other ones. I won't put you through doing the build process 15 times over. It's only four, but it seems like it in the end. Alright, so we need step one is to take some stuff out of the plastic. Okay, and I'm just gonna make up the U bolt because I like to do that first. Just quickly so that it's all in one piece. Just putting these bolts in so it actually just holds together. It's easier to do that to slide this over the end of the boom and just hold it in place if you've already actually just put the saddle on the back of the motor mount. Now, I'm not going to tighten this up just yet, but first thing I want to talk about is the length of this particular piece of cable. Now, the wires on the Carbon Bird motors are all long enough for the big 300mm arms, but in the case of these shorter arms on the smaller airframes, the wires are way too long and if you just fed, feed the wire through like that, you're going to end up with a huge bird's nest of wires inside the centre section of the airframe, which we don't want to end up with. Um, so you've got a couple of options here with this wire. Um, some guys do like to trim them off and resolder the leads, which is great and fine. You can do that. But what I but if you then go and extend these booms later, or you want to use these motors on a larger airframe, you then have to try and rejoin these wires and extend them, which is quite awkward. What I like to do is a Z bend in the wires. So basically, what you do is 
you just bend the wire back on itself then back out again okay so you actually form a little bundle and that bundle is going to end up sitting inside the boom doing it this way and that just makes it a hell of a lot easier because the wires out of the way of the build it's neatly tucked away and if you decide later on you want to use this motor on a longer boom you've got the wire available you, all you have to do is just undo this little bend so what I'm just doing here is I'm just looking at the wire length I'm laying the motor where it's going to sit on it and I think that's probably just a little bit too short so I'm just going to pull a bit of the wire out of that loop that bundle and that's a good length right there so right now I'm going to grab a piece of heat shrink tubing just a little centimetre on bit and I'm just going to feed the motor wires through that and rest it loosely for the moment over that bundle of wires okay have another look just to triple check the length might just go a little bit further on that one okay I'm happy with that length so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to shrink that piece of heat shrink tubing there and you can use a hairdryer for this um, you can use a paint stripping gun which I tend to be wary of you can use a cigarette lighter but you've got to be really careful you don't melt stuff with one of those um, I've got this little gas powered blowtorch that does the job very nicely okay so now my cables to length so what I'm now going to do is pop the saddle off the boom feed the wires through the motor mount and then sit the motor mount over the top of the motor and I want to find the holes that line up the mounting holes that line up so that my wires get a, the neatest run come out as close to straight to go straight into the booms right and it's going to be those two holes there yep cool it's going to be those two holes so screwdriver screw I've mentioned this in other videos but do not neglect ever using your 243 Loctite any metal screw that goes into metal, you really have to put Loctite on. Okay. So I'm just going to dip the tip of the screw into it, just so I've got a tiny little bit, don't need much, on the screw. Line that plate up and pop my short M3 screw through the motor mount into the motor. Okay. One screw, two screws. Okay, and now that I've got both screws in, I'll just give them a nice tighten up. You don't have to over tighten the screws when you lose using Loctite, because the Loctite will actually hold the screw in. It needs to be snug, you can't leave the screw loose and hope the Loctite will stop it falling out, but you don't have to try and strip the heads out of the screws. So now I'm going to feed the wire through the boom. And slide the boom into that saddle where I pre-fitted those two screws earlier. I'm just going to come around here and tuck that wire around a bit so it just sits in a nice spot. And I'll do the clamp up with about five millimeters of the boom going beyond the saddle. It's not an exact number, it's sort of a bit of a 
I don't like to clamp right onto the very end of the carbon fibre because you can sort of, if you over tighten the clamp accidentally, you can sort of crush the end of the tubing. So I want a bit of tubing through the saddle. It doesn't have to go too far through the saddle. Now at this point in time what I'm doing is taking those two, each screw out one at a time, dipping it in my Loctite and putting the screw back in. Now as I tighten these screws up, what I'm trying to do is make sure this little gap here, and there will be a bit of a gap, these saddles don't bind up perfectly against the motor mounts, there's always a bit of a gap there. What you want to do is as you're tightening these up, try and get it so that the gap is the same on both sides of the boom. And that's pretty good. And again, I'm snugging them up. I'm not over tightening them. I'm going to let the, the Loctite do its job and hold the screw in. Right? But it's snug enough that nothing's going to move. Okay. Here's my motor going, leads going into it. Motor mounts on. And I've just got a little bit of wire hanging out the back here. Just enough. All right. Don't want too much, just creates more mess and mayhem inside the center airframe. Okay, so that's my first one done. I'm gonna put the next three together and I'll come back. Okay, so there we are, I've got my four booms made up. I've just gone through and repeated that process, okay? So I've done the Z bend in the wire with the bit of heat shrink around it. Pre-done the little saddle clamp onto the back of the motor mount so that it just is a little less fiddly when you're trying to slide it all together. Two bolts into the motor so that the wire comes out pointing straight into the boom. And there we are I'm using um, Loctite as I've gone. One thing I like to do with my airframes, and um, it's up to you whether or not you do or not, I like to take a bit of this, um, a bit of white heat shrink tubing, and I actually put that onto two booms which will become the front pair of booms it just gives a bit more um, it just gives a, a an extra added visual aid for when you're looking for orientation of the the quad copter in flight quads in particular are a bit hard to tell in flight which way is front and which way is back it's pretty good with the scarabs because you get the andromeda LED array which is really um, super bright super visible during the day and it really does give you a great indication of where the back and the front is but um, I'm of the opinion you can't have enough uh, visual aids to help you with orientation so I like um, I put a bit of this white heat shrink tubing onto the front pair of booms I used to put red tubing onto the rear booms as well but I found it wasn't actually really that visible um, but the white really does stand out so um, you could still do the red booms if you want to whoops but uh, I just don't bother anymore because uh, it really uh, wasn't giving me that good a benefit whereas the but the white still very stands out really well maybe a different color than red would work but in my head uh, red's always the back because that's the, where the red LEDs are on the Andromeda as well. So there we go. Four booms ready to go. And I'm going to leave you with that for the moment and I'll come back in the next video and start looking at the frames.